Hello everyone and welcome back to the farm. Last night and into this morning we got a little bit of rainfall. 35 hundredths of an inch, 0.35 is all it really amounted to. Just enough to fill this little mud hole in the driveway here. Ground itself though, not even enough to fill the cracks in. So with all of our driest beans already cut and a little bit of added moisture overnight, what does that mean for today? We're picking corn. Just a little bit ago, the crew already took both combines up north with the corn heads attached. One of the combines, the S670, is already picking some corn north of town. I'm gonna go find the grain cart, see if I can back it out of the barn, and we're gonna hit corn harvest hard here today. I'm excited to see these yields. If you like high yielding corn and the people who grow it, make sure you like the video and subscribe. When I heard it raining last night and this morning, I kind of penciled in in my mind that I wasn't gonna have to do anything that hard today, but we're gonna pick corn. I'm running the grain cart. I may be tired in a couple hours. Ooh, feels like it went from summer to fall in one day. It's cloudy outside, windy, like 55, 60 degrees, and there's leaves on the ground. What happened? Need some hot chocolate. Nothing is working. Nothing. Better control the yield, nothing. Nothing, uh, that one's not working either. You may have a career as a grain cart operator with skills like that. Nothing quite gives me anxiety like picking crossways. Back of the helm of the ship, try to figure out why our roastance isn't working. Left sensor voltage too low, which probably means that it's got a broken wire. So we're hand steering. Also, that may be a record for corn yield. Don't tell the USDA about that. Just hit it with the old turn it off and turn it back on again. Seems to work on deer stuff. Got all my offsets lined up right now, so I think we've made some progress. Hopefully that brings our average to a little bit more realistic of a level. It works, now it's telling me my cleaning fan's not running. That's not good. Well, there's our problem. Belt's off. That's not good. Bad news, the cleaning fan belt's off, which drives another conveyor system underneath. Really not that big of a deal in terms of what we're going to get done today. This corn was actually 19 to 20% moisture, which is way higher than we want to take us the elevator at. We don't like to pay them to dry our corn. We like Mother Nature to do it for free. There was another goal to coming to this field other than just to pick it. If it was dry enough, we would have harvested the whole field, but it wasn't. Through the middle of this field, there's a very big draw and gully that's been created over time from the amount of water that washes across it. This fall, we're finally making the investment to put up a couple terraces, or I guess you call them infield dams, to stop the water in combination with a tile system to drain those terraces to hopefully stop that erosion through the field. We're wanting to go ahead and prepare to run the tile regardless of whether or not we pick the corn. We'd rather pick it sideways through the draw than let them run it over with the tile plow. This is gonna be a pretty big project. I think it's gonna take the quality of this farm from A to A plus. We've got most of the important stuff picked, but unfortunately the belt's off, so we're gonna have to go fix that. That'll be a terrace out there. All that we pick sideways is going to be the draw that's going to have a new 12 inch tile ran through it and then there's going to be another terrace somewhere along in here. We're just picking it out that way if they do decide to come. We're kind of at their will in terms of dirt work and tile work. So we'd rather not lose this corn because it's pretty good corn. You don't want to just run it over. A lot of people will sacrifice spots out on their field to run tile in season. Really it's just never been a style that we've liked to do. We planted the crop for a reason. We're going to harvest it. It may have been a blessing in disguise. We may have stayed out here too long and just coincidentally picked the whole field. Replace a couple hundred dollar belts for saving thousands of dollars in drying costs. We've already done the diagnosing, we just need to do the fixing. An American finger trap. Gotta watch out for these things. Alright, this is gonna be a pull all the shields type of deal. Need my skeleton key. How the heck does this thing come on? Just use your brain. That's a lot of belt. I had my money on the cleaning fan belt going out first. Parts run. All right, we secured the belt and got a little bit of advice from the shop foreman on how to install it. The bad news is, is it's going to be pretty complicated. The good news is, is if we had Alexion, we'd be down for a week. They also gave me a little cheat sheet here to kind of see how it goes on. I'm not exactly a big Case IH and Caterpillar guy, but that guy's got an awesome fleet out there. Well, the nice part of having two combines is that when one breaks down, the other one can keep running. The other part that makes this a little bit more challenging that I forgot to mention is that it runs the four cleaning shoe augers. Those four cleaning shoe augers are probably full of grain. They may not be, but most likely the belt broke when it was running, so they're plugged full of grain. If we do all this work, replace the belt that serpentines around all seven of these pulleys, 
and turn it on with loaded screws, we'll have to go get another belt and fix it again. So let's do this right the first time. It doesn't look that complicated, does it? We'll have this done in like five minutes, watch. It's like the minute we switched over to corn and came up here, everything started going wrong. Our corn head has given us nothing but trouble, all sorts of issues with our row sense calibration. I mean, we had to hand steer out in the field. Horrendous. Then we had a sensor go out on the back of the combine, which is not a hard fix. We just had to get the part. And now we've got this cleaning shoe belt drive system. What in the world? Corn is very hard on combines in terms of wear and tear. Soybeans may produce a lot of dry material, but the actual volume of grain is low. Whereas corn, we're looking at three to four times the amount of gross volume per acre. Picking 250, 260 bushel corn at 19% is a lot to run through the combine. Acres run in total bushels is one of the reasons that a lot of larger farmers like to keep their combines as the newest part of their lineup. A lot of times they'll save expenses by having older tractors, older planters, older iron, but combines, they usually like to keep pretty new. There's a lot that can go wrong on these machines. As you can see, there's a vast amount of moving parts, things that can get intertwined and mixed up very easily. Even taking them to our local John Deere dealership over the winter, having it fully looked over and serviced by experienced professionals, wasn't enough to catch everything and foresee all the issues that can occur out in the field. I'm gonna go pick Dad up from the combine after he finishes dumping, give him a sit rep of what I've been briefed on, and then go from there and see if we can figure this out. There is one positive. It's a beautiful day for a breakdown. I'm not sure if you can even put those two statements in one sentence. This belt's also brown and the other ones are black. Isn't a black belt higher in martial arts than a brown belt? Why would we want a brown belt? Took off one more protective shield to expose a few more of the pulleys that we have to have access to. Hopefully that's the farthest one to the right, but there may be one up higher. Update, and it's not a good one. Our shoe augers are definitely full of corn. So we're gonna have to clean all that out. It actually couldn't have happened at a better time. We really weren't gonna pick that much more of that corn anyways. So we're just gonna move home and fix it here. I got the loader out because I think that might be kind of useful for helping clean out that shoe. One hour later. Ooh, he left his ladder up. Little tree catcher. Let's see if we can get this fixed. Not in the yard, it just rained. Have some decency. collect a lot of corn down here. I wonder how much we have to actually take off so it can run without ruining another boat. Still digging. We're getting there slowly. We've cleaned a lot of the grain out of the shoe auger here. I can spin it by hand, so I think that we're gonna be fine to start the combine eventually and not ruin this belt. We'll wait and see what happens when we turn it on, but that shouldn't be a problem. In the process of getting this big, long belt on that covers seven different pulleys, nothing too complicated in here. We had to take off this accessory fan drive belt. That runs our cleaning fan here in the bottom. You cannot get the belt around it without taking this off and taking this electronic belt speed adjuster off as well. In the process of taking this off, we ended up buggering up the connection here. So now we can't adjust this anymore. This pulley right here adjusts the cleaning fan speed by spreading. That is all controlled by this little electronic gadget here. And since we messed up the plug for it, we can't spread it enough to get it around that pulley. We're gonna have to put a new end on the electronic control unit. That way we can widen the pulley enough that there's enough slack on the belt that it can get around that pulley there. Only 30 or 40 bushels. Not the cleanest either, but we did it here on the concrete. We should be able to clean it up pretty easy. Really, this project here has been kind of an unfortunate turn of events for our start to corn harvest. But hey, at least we weren't hitting the ground running full speed today. I'm not entirely sure how exactly to judge our productivity for the day, because at the beginning of the day, I was thinking, man, we're not gonna do anything at all today. And by the end of the day, I was disappointed because my midday expectations did not get met. I guess some progress is better than no progress. To be continued. I would rate that job a few tiers below slugging the combine. Not quite as bad. I really think that there should be a better way to clean out all of that area underneath the rotor without having to just dig it out. I think there'd be like a trap door at the bottom, but maybe that's not possible. If any of you guys know a better way to do that, please tell me. I would like to know. Although the only time that we've slugged the rotor in a combine was two falls ago. It was 90 degrees outside and very humid and dad and I had to climb inside Katie's combine and pull out all the soybean stems that were jammed up in there. It wasn't exactly my favorite job on the farm by the time you take those weather conditions into it and the fact that we're inside a combine that's been cutting soybeans for the last few weeks. Just a reservoir of bean dust. 
I don't think I felt clean for like a week after that project. And you wanna talk about allergies. Whew, that was bad. That's pretty much it for part one of this project. Tomorrow we'll dive into it a little bit farther and kind of see what we need to do because if it doesn't rain, which it is sprinkling right now, we may have some more soybeans to cut or we may find some dry corn. It's not looking good though. We got some rain falling down. It'll probably go from no rain at all to opening up the floodgates. That's just the way mother nature likes to operate. She sure is erratic. 50 degrees this morning, not a fan. Starting the combines up, letting them warm up a little bit. We have a service truck coming out to look them both over. There's a few minor problems on this 9670. I'm not entirely sure, but it has something to do with the sensor of some sort. And the S670 has the belt problem still. Anyways, we're gonna have them help us fix that electronic control unit on the pulley and then get that belt on. We could get the belt on ourselves normally, but we messed up that one part, which is what allows you to do it. So we're just gonna have a professional kill two birds with one stone out here. Dad and I were both pretty surprised with how high the moisture was in that corn. We're gonna go around this morning and see if we've got any beans closer to being dry, or even corn. Waiting on a mechanic's a perfect time to scout some bean fields. That rain made a noticeable difference almost overnight. Even our latest planted 3.7 Don Mario Enlist soybeans look like they're pretty much ready to harvest. Obviously they're a little tough still from the rain and dew overnight. I think all of our beans are gonna cut. We're still waiting on the mechanic to come out. Farming's like 90% waiting it seems like most days and 10% working. When things are ready, operating, and going smoothly, we can get a lot done pretty quickly, but it's when we're waiting on things like this that time really adds up. No key fob. How are we gonna start it? We're not, we're gonna take my truck. That puts our truck remote total at two times so far in the first week of harvest. The corn head on the 9670 still isn't fixed yet. The header height sensor has something wrong with it. We're not sure if it just needs replaced or if it's a wiring issue. We're still waiting on the mechanic for both combines. We're looking for someone with a little bit more refined of a resume for working on combines and corn heads than we have. This cornfield isn't any drier than any of the other corn we picked or tested. What we're doing here though, is we have two bean fields that we think are close enough to cut today. One of our bean fields is here to the south. We've got this corn field in the middle and then we have the other bean field to the north. As opposed to doing some whole big circus act, after moving from a 15 acre field to another bigger field, we decided it would be easier to come down here and pick a little bit of this wet corn and open up a lane to our next farm right along the interstate. That way we don't have to cart everything around. So I think once everything's ready, we're gonna cut some beans. That 9670 is ready to go, but we are waiting on the S670 still. When the soybeans get a little less tough when we go out there, the 9670 can cut beans. There's nothing wrong with the combine itself. It was the corn head that has issue. We can transition the combine settings over relatively quickly, pick up a draper and go cut beans. I had to start keeping a fishing pole in my truck just for downtime like this. I do not have the expertise or the patience to be a fisherman though. Someone can come show me how to do it. Hands down, my biggest pet peeve is when we run over a crop. I just cannot stand that. What was the point of going back there just to run over these beans? Why do we farm so close to the lane if we're not even gonna be able to harvest it? Needless to say, I don't always agree with the boss. Plus we also picked about 500 bushels of 20% corn, so we also have to pay for drying that. Seems like a losing venture. The mechanic must have finally shown up and the old gal's back in action. Headed to cut some beans. I want the record to note that there is no way that I'm the person responsible for that belt breaking. I did not pick a single kernel of corn with that combine in my time in it, and the shoes were full of corn. There is no way that I had anything to do with that breaking. Although I was riding in the combine, so maybe I'm just bad luck. Honestly, this whole saga is probably karma for my Lexion joke. Maybe I should be nicer. If we did have a Lexion though, we probably would still be waiting on parts. That is a lot of combines right there. It was awfully sweet of them to come cut this field so we had somewhere to hook up at. Wow, this bridge makes me uneasy. The beans are 13 and a half, 14% moisture. We're gonna get the rest of the fleet and cut them. Wish me luck backing this thing out. Best case scenario, it comes out with no problems at all. Worst case scenario, I total the draper. If you can get it in, you can usually get it out. Now you listen here. Don't get used to the spoiled, inside the barn, fancy schmancy European parking job. You may not get to have this luxury all season. Hope you don't get soft on me. 
While the tractor's warming up, I was doing a little bit of cleaning. I went to empty my cup holder, and surprisingly, I left myself a half drinking monster. I think it still tastes good. Not quite as sweet, but past Andy really takes care of future Andy. Maybe I do the opposite by drinking these. I don't know. I, kind of like a give and a take. I may be burning the wick at both ends. The cart is out. Now I just gotta clear the draper. Remind me to never park in there again. You know who's gonna be ecstatic about all that corn we had to clean out? The pigeons. Might have to sit out here with a shotgun. Don't worry, we'll pick it up. Probably 30 bushels. The mechanic's just finishing up work on the 9670's corn head. So we can unhook that now and we'll have both combines at the field. I'm headed over with the grain cart. Chris made it across the bridge with the head cart. I'm not going to pretend that I wasn't at least slightly worried about that. A nice and early 2.30 p.m. start to soybean harvest on this beautiful Tuesday. Very fall-like outside. It's a very blue day in the atmosphere. Combine number two is hooking up to its head. It should be rolling soon. And she's off! Since this is a smaller field, I'm going to go ahead and start moving the carts over across the road to the next one. We won't be here for that long. It may take a little bit longer though. Katie's only a half draper width and a half through through the field and she'd already plugged her head. Oh, look, a hidden treasure. If I got paid by weight for rocks, I'd be a millionaire. I hate farming next to a super highway. A lot of risks associated with this. All right, one head's moved. Not very far. You can see our other combine just over the corn right there. Car two staged and ready to go. I don't know if we'll unhook a head and drive it down or if we'll just take the combines down the road with the heads on. Time will tell. Duty calls. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all my bonus money from keeping these combines running. It stinks to be so good at your job. Those are dusty beans. Kinda hard to see what I'm doing right now. Don't tell anyone if I spill a little bit over the sides. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this weather. It's like you kind of need a jacket, but you also don't need a jacket, but you're going to be upset if you forget your jacket. But if you wear your jacket too long, you're going to start sweating. Either bring on the cold or bring on the heat, but just, I don't like this gray area we're in right now. After a lot of trial and error, I think I finally determined that the perfect way to sit right now with this weather is tractor off, windows and door closed. That must be the equilibrium. Just like that, we're moving to the next field. I guess this is how we're doing this. Not exactly standard procedure, but at least I don't have to move. The farmer right over there to the south somewhere, dumping his combine right now, is wrapping up his last harvest of his career. And he's retiring and his family's gonna take over his operation. I bet that's a bittersweet feeling. Farmers being able to retire is a relatively recent trend in agriculture. For decades, maybe even centuries, a farmer retired when he died. The finances have really shifted in modern agriculture to allow farmers to profit more on the ground, make better investments, and help fund their retirements. Really glad for that guy that he's retiring and he's got some great people to take over. I think my body's kind of adapted to the current allergens in the air. I'm really not having the issues I was at the beginning of harvest. That bean dust, man, it's nasty. Nasty stuff, but once your body gets used to it, it's not quite as bad. I had to pull the flag marking the fungicide trial. It's the last flow they'll make it to the elevator at night. 545. I wonder if we'll keep cutting and load everything full or just leave it empty for the night. Probably depends on the moisture. I'm not a combine operator, so I really have no idea what they're testing. I went out to take a leak in the cornfield. I almost got lost. That would have been bad. I've always had this weird, unfounded fear that I'm going to be out in a cornfield and get attacked by like a mountain lion or some kind of wild cat. I've seen what my house cats can do to animals. I don't want to meet a mountain lion out here. One neighbor's already got his lights on. I'm leaving this competition with gold. Two down, let's go. And also the other green card. But I don't know if it counts if you turn it off all the time. Is not being able to see what you're doing a valid excuse for spilling grain everywhere? Asking for myself. Neighbor's cart guy threw his lights on. Two down. One to go. I basically have lights on. I got these stupid things blinding me. A very formidable adversary. But I think I got this. Haha, <laughs> victory! There's still some ambient sunlight out there. What is this, amateur hour? Come on. You merely adapted to the dock. I was born in it. Molded by it. Name that movie. Must be quitting. We may or may not be quitting. I, I really don't know, no one's told me anything. I guess I'll wait for a smoke signal or something. Or phone call, I guess, that works too. What'd you say? It looks like we're parking everything for the night. Where's our ride? Back at it again today. Today is 
Hold on. I gotta think about that for a minute. Today's Wednesday. It's getting to the point in the year where I really don't exactly know what day it is. Farming season tends to do that to me. I don't know if it's because I'm sleep deprived or it really doesn't matter what day it is because I know what we're gonna be doing if it doesn't rain. Harvesting. Does anyone else have that problem or is it just me? Once the grain cart tractor gets limbered up this morning, I'm filling Chris up in the 10 wheeler. Dad and Jeff right now are sitting an auger on another bin we're gonna store beans in and we're gonna start filling it. There's no shortage of trucks on the interstate this morning. They must have gotten an early start. Filling her up. I think I could have fit a little bit more right there in the corner. Other than that, he's loaded pretty good. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Just kidding, we're barely even warmed up this morning. Also, if you haven't liked the video yet, what are you doing? Just go down there, 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 maybe wherever it is. I don't know where it is. Show me where it is and like it. Helps me out a lot. The belt's made it through its first day. Hopefully it lasts at least 10 more years. That's wishful thinking. In case you were wondering, one angled through in this field is 1,669 feet long. Going to the bin means you can cut 15% beans. It's amazing to me how much of a downgrade this 96.7 STS feels like compared to the S-Series combine I was running the other day. How spoiled and soft am I that I can complain about the difference in cab conditions when the people who built this farm and a lot of farms around the country were operating in conditions that I couldn't even imagine. Combines with no cabs, machines that were pulled by horses, hand work, that makes me want to throw up. Dad would know much more than I do about that struggle. He grew up in a time when they were still using some of that rudimentary self-propelled equipment. I've been blessed by technology. It would be so crazy to see how generations past would react to this new equipment, this new technology we use to farm. They probably wouldn't even believe it. She's struggling in these wet beans. I actually got a kind of full hopper. Incredible. I'm just good at loading trucks in any machine I run. I'm less upset about being kicked out of the combine and more upset that I'm already hungry. Lunch is still like an hour or two away. I'm not a huge fan of bridges. I've been recruited to help swing the auger. Beans pull so much harder on the tractor than corn does. It takes a lot of power to move beans up. The empty truck. Shut her down. It's already about full. Only holds about 4,500 or so bushels of soybeans. I get back from the bin site, Dad has not only used the grain cart, he also left the auger up. I guess that's his stance on where the auger should be. Not really, actually, he's the one who told me to put the auger down every time. No sudden movements or he's gonna have some cab beans. They're already sprinkling off the top. Going over the lane. Brace yourself. If you're wondering what the max capacity of an S670 combine is, that's it. That grain bin's one load shy of being full, which we have on the truck, and these beans are too wet to take the elevator. So we're gonna give it an hour with this breeze and sunshine, and hopefully they'll be closer to 13%. Right now they're 14 to 15. Don't wanna get docked. Dad unhooked his draper and went over to get some fuel somewhere over there. Actually a pretty neat example of how these heads can flex over the ground. Look at that shape it's made, just perfectly hugging the terrain. Everyone else is at the bin while we're waiting for these beans to dry, and I'm the combine jockey. Hooking and unhooking heads and fueling them up. For the cart guy, I'm pretty good at this. May have some combine operations in my future. It's that easy. Ready to go. Looks like a good spot for this one. The fuel barrel we go. Fueling her up. Also, I made a friend. Hello, buddy. This a horse or a donkey? You wanna run the combine for me and I can take a nap? No, you don't seem very interested in that. Why weren't all grain bins designed with stairs? This is so much nicer than a ladder. A bird's eye view of this farm. We're cutting right over there. There's our neighbor to the south cutting. It actually looks like the combine's moving, so I better go take this other one back to the field. 
I shouldn't be this out of breath from a staircase, but I am. Moving again. Did a quick hop over I-57. We've got one combine up and running. There is a 9670 going down the road to the south like over that overpass. And that's where we came from. Over there. The outer wagon is. Already starting our next move. Chris and I were just moving one of the head carts around and we had a little bit extra time, so I snuck off to the gas station to get some of my caffeine fix in for the day. I told Chris, you rat me out, it's not gonna be good. You know what happens to snitches? They get stitches. I didn't compensate for the wind adequately and possibly peed on the truck a little bit. Sorry, Dad. Given the nature of my editing, I know everything always seems very quick, but I kid you not, we may have been out here for 20 minutes and we're already heading to the next field. These small ones really add up because there's a lot of moving involved. This is why we picked that corn. Hello, interstate friends. Well, this is an interesting field full of oil wells and terraces, so I'm going to do what I do best. Find a nice shady area, turn the tractor off, open up the windows and relax for a little bit. It is both extremely dusty and extremely windy. Sorry, interstate folks. Any good guesses as to where the glacial moraine is located at on our farm? This is where it stopped, right through here. These terraces aren't typically a great place to unload on the go. A lot of times that change in ground elevation can be enough to cause a misalignment from the combine to the grain cart. And if you're not careful, you can ran your combine auger into the grain cart and do some damage. So I have to wait until he's over that last terrace before I can catch him, which is where he's right now. So I better go. We're back in the first field of soybeans that we cut this year, cleaning up the replants. They're only about two weeks behind the originals. Now that the sun set, I really regret leaving the tractor without my jacket on. If there's any field that we farm that I would prefer not to be operating on at night, it'd be this one. Especially not cutting replant soybeans. Oil wells everywhere, power lines, access roads, what have you. Hopefully they're paying attention. And hopefully I'm paying attention as well. Well everyone, hopefully there's nothing exciting left in store for us in between now and quitting time tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right here. I think that's enough farming for one video. We're still working on these replant beans. Tomorrow we've got a lot more beans on the docket to finish up cutting. And then hopefully in the next few days, we'll be able to transition over and fully focus on picking dry corn. With that being said, I really appreciate you tuning in. And if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It really helps spread the channel. Subscribe if you want to see more and comment if you have any questions. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You know I love to talk about farming. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great night. Peace.